In the first section of this uh, video, we talked about grammar. The second section was about banking and uh, postal. The third section is going to be our clerk of the court, Mark Corba, and he's going to explain what his duties are when a document is filed with him. I'd like to introduce Mike Corba over here. Uh, my name is Mark, Mark Corba. Hyphen, Allen, full colon, Corba. I'm a clerk of the court for Hawaii. Here's a copy of my oath I filed in the federal court in Honolulu. And uh, part of my duties are when I receive these court cases or complaints, um, I have a file stamp, federal post to court filing, and I write the corporation case number, which is a registered mail number. I think uh, David will explain more about how we get those. And I put the date, the time, and uh, I document it that way with my fingerprint and my signature, record that, and then we also, okay, that's usually on the first page. And in Hawaii, we'll um, go file it, file it in uh, circuit court usually, and as a courtesy docking, even though it's not their case. So it's documented here that uh, there is a case in the local circuit court. And then we do a proof of the service, which is on the last page, and uh, we have a proof of the service to who it goes to with registered or certified mail numbers, the date that it's mailed. And we have a green card that comes back with that here, proving that they accepted it, they signed it. These are always document contract cases and uh, all written in full quantum. And um, we have proof they signed it and they come back as a green card and then we file it in the Bureau of Conveyances. Here's a copy of the cover pages with the document number. So it's in the public knowledge arena, even though it's not their case, it's just proof that we do have a case. The registered serial numbers are registered postal numbers that we dock. It means we take these documents and we assign a registered mail number and it gets assigned to the paperwork. And that is our quantum number that goes with the stamps. The clerk of the court at the circuit level will go ahead when we dock these vessels with them as a courtesy will also assign a docking number. Now, the reason we call this a document because paper is a vessel in a sea of space. The vessel comes to the port of the court. Now, don't forget, the courthouse is a foreign vessel in dry dock. So therefore, the clerk of the courts is actually a port, has port authorities, docking authorities, to dock vessel paper when it comes to the clerk's office. So the vessel comes in, hits the dock, it gets a docket, D-O-C-K-E-T number, and then it's called a document. And because it's a contract with two or more people, it's now a document contract. And this, all stamps are federal, so it's a document contract, federal, postal, and, it, and we call it, some of them, we were using the word station on some, case, uh, some cases, others we call vessels. Now a vessel was the, a vessel coming to court but once it gets to court, it's a document, uh, it's the document contract federal postal station federal court. Because a station is where vessels come and leave, just like a bus station, a train station. But terminals are where airplanes leave planet Earth and come back to planet Earth. A terminal for a train station is the end of the line where it turns around and goes back someplace else, but it means the terminals are end and beginning, stations are coming and going. A post office or postal station is where mail comes in, brought by humans or by, by the people. It gets stamped, processed, and then goes out to another, local, another station. It might transfer three or four stations before it gets to its termination, which is your home. 
So we're using the correct grammar to identify what our court is all about. It's about postal, it's about vessels, it's about stations. It's about doing dockets and documents and docking. And so we're, we're, Mark is fo following, or the clerk of the court is following specific maritime docketing protocols and registering mail, paying those docking fees, paying the mailing fees, and then it goes to Bureau of Conveyance. Now one thing is, Hawaii being a sovereign country is the only country of the 50 states that the United States claims that uses a Bureau of Conveyance. And Bureau is a pronoun, of is an adverb making conveyance to be a verb. Well, should be for the Bureau of the Conveyance, which we correct. So it's a, it's a, constant, a constant challenge to get people to use the correct grammar because they've been so entrenched in, their, in the way they used to do things. At one point, the FBI building in Washington, D.C. Washington, said, for the Bureau of the Investigation, using prepositional phrase. And it was only up there for a few weeks, and Russell and I both witnessed it when we were in Washington. And the next time we went back, it said, Federal Bureau of Investigation, making investigation to be no vested contract as a dangling participle verb to go with the dangling participle verb America. So they corrected it, and then somebody says, no, you can't have a world of fi a fact you can't have one fact in the world of fiction because you'll trip everybody in fiction and let them know they made a mistake. And if they, we don't all lie together, we're all going to have to lay together. So they continue the lie, whereas we as federal postal judges are using the correct parse syntax grammar to change this world. Not just, this isn't about America. It's about the entire, our planet being able to communicate with each other in a mathematical procedures. So we want to be prepared to be able to communicate and have a peaceful communication when the time comes. And to educate 8 billion people is going to take time. But it's time that our leaders, the 3% of the population that run the planet, know how to communicate so that they can do it correct when the time comes. We even went so far as to take all 92 judges of the Hawaiian Islands, both state and district, and syntax all their O's, and they are all written in adverb verb, italicized, which means it's removed from the paper, and some of them are even put in a box. So uh, maritime law boxing says anything that's in a box is enclosed and can't be considered. So we have judges that are not judges, appointing commissioners that are not commissioners because they don't have an oath of office. They're selling property advertised without title and without any guarantees at public auctions without any authorization. Congress and both the Supreme Court have ruled that you cannot sell property without title. And these people are going like, so what? We're going to sell it anyways. That's the way we do things here in Hawaii. And so they keep selling property without title to unsuspecting buyers who think they're buying something only to be later, several years down the road, foreclosed because the mortgage had 4,700 mistakes on it, was written in adverb verb, and wasn't signed by the bank, and they're just turning over people and harvesting money and harvesting down payments. Now, under the Rescissions Act, Title 15, Section 1635A, the bank has to give a three-day notice that they're going to tell lies on the mortgage. And if they don't show that they can use a correct parse syntax grammar mortgage contract under Title 15, Section 1639A, are subject to a four times damages. Let's say if you got, had invested a quarter million dollars as a down payment, the bank now has to pay you a refund of $1 million, plus four times all the interest they collected on, a four, on, a, on the mortgage that they took out. And this, this is effective from the year 2000 forward. As the United States of America Corporation, 
the banking and the treasury ceased to exist on the 2nd of November 1999 when the third international bankruptcy expired. Then wow. there was a one year grace period and a 45 day trust law which brought you up to November 2nd uh, 2000 when the new when we were supposed to elect a president but they didn't have us no president was elected into in in the November 2nd 2000 they had all the country the states two-thirds of the states recount their ballots for 90 days because no law is legal for 90 days and on the 2nd of February 2001 Bush was appointed the first president of the United States of America Corporation and everybody using Federal Reserve notes for commerce or MasterCards became a postal citizen under the, under the guise of usury. And so therefore they were, uh, they didn't announce that to the public, but for 90 days, the United States of America did, had ceased to exist. The Internal Revenue Service, which is owned by the Bar Association in a, in, by a trust, also ceased to exist. So the Internal Revenue Service, even though this is 2014, has a cutoff of the 2nd of, 2nd of February in the year 2000. They can't go back to anything in the 1990s or 1980s because of a 90-day time period when America did not exist. So I'm just bringing you guys up to speed on some timelines here. And this is also the time frame where uh, I was under contract with my post roads for the bills of the ladings uh, for my position as postmaster hyphen general and secretary of the treasury of the country, which David and I filed our correct mechanics under maritime law of banking to establish this program. It was a 115 page document that we served on all the branches of government and uh, we spent 12,000 bucks on, on printing and postage to make sure everybody got a copy of it out of our own pocket. But when we, we worked on that for six years, go, walking into it, because we knew that when the end was going to t come, we started in 1995 and we concluded our, our timelines within the, uh, the dates that were relevant uh, around 2000. Yes, for I concur. <laughs> and with Cheryl's case, she, she is the first person in the Hawaiian Islands to have a quantumized quiet title with all the protocols filed in the correct timelines with the correct parse syntax grammar. And even though we showed that the judges and the commissioners do not have oaths of office, that they are running a, a lie, a scam on the people, this evidence when it was presented to the police department, the sheriff's department, and the FBI, they said that's the way we do things here on, in, in Hawaii. And they would not stop and correct, even though Title 18, 1001 is the fictitious conveyance of language and carries a 10-year, $10,000 fine. Title 15, Section 1692E, better known as the Bernie Madoff case, which paid a $25 million fine under Title 15, Section 78FF for each count of violations. Now these documents were given to the police, the sheriff, and the FBI to show that the criminal activity was part being participated in with forensic evidence. And there, all three branches of government said, we're not interested. This is the way we do things. I says, oh, you, you have a, I says, we have a confession, a confession that says you broke the law. I says, we, we put it in numbers, we put it in color codes, we explained that we, we taught them how to, what a fraud looks like. They said, we don't care. We're just, this is the way we're going to do things. You know, it's, it's, they say, we got the guns, we got the clubs, and this is what we're going to enforce. You know, the, the, the rule of nature is you can keep what you can hold. That's not correct. The pen is mightier than the club. And the pen writes contracts, constitutions, and puts down behavior, correct laws, rules, regulations, and codes for the correct behavior of individuals living in close community so that we don't have wars. No one ever went to war over a math problem. And that's why we created this 
this mathematical interface on grammar to show people you can write a sentence frontwards and you can write it backwards and it has the same value. Here's an example. For the bridge is over the water. I'll say it backwards. For the water is under the bridge. Over and under are opposite prepositions and both sentences are the same picture. Now if I remove one word and I take the word for out and I say the bridge is over the water. The water is under the bridge. Now the word the becomes an adverb, making the next word into a verb, whether it be the bridge or the water. Is now is an adverb making over and under both verbs. Of is an adverb making the word water and bridge to be verbs. And as you know, there is no such thing as a verb, water, a verb, over and under, and a verb, bridge. So what we did here is we showed the people that the prepositional phrase represents the add, subtract, multiply, and divide, sine, cosine, tangent of mathematics. <clears throat> Everything you can do frontwards, you can do backwards using the opposite preposition. And if you remove the prepositional phrase, and you either remove the preposition or you move, remove the article, like they did on the United States of America. It should say for the United hyphen states of an America, because an goes in front of a vowel, not the word the as an adverb. So they use, they use wrong grammar. And the second part of this is three times three times three equals 27. Zero times three times three times three equals zero. So a fact times a fact times a fact will equal a fact. But a lie times a fact times a fact times a fact will still equal a lie. Everyone that goes into court and takes the witness stand, if you tell a lie anywhere in your testimony, before, during, or after, all your testimony is thrown out because it's a multiple of zero. So you've said nothing except obstructed. And OB means no, obstruct, which means a structure or a fact, no fact. And if you obstruct facts, then you're going to wind up creating lies. And everyone knows what a liar is. Everyone knows what perjury is. And that's not admitted, it's, that, that's not allowed in any court, in any language of any country on this planet. And yet when you go into a courtroom and you use adverb, verb, grammar, adverb, verb, prosecutors, in other words, the, the state of, and they use the, they, they, they'll, they'll say the, the, the state of Hawaii, because we're in Hawaii. State is a pronoun, of is an adverb making Hawaii a verb. A pronoun, P-R-O means no, N-O means no, and U-N means no. So you got a no, no, no being modified by a vowel and two consonants, A-D-V, adverb, which is connected to a verb fiction, and that fact, which should be Hawaii, is now used as a verb fiction. So we're bringing this thing in the state of the Hawaii or for the Hawaii ter hyphen territory, making it a compound condition of location. Territory meaning T-E-R is terra, O-R-Y is contract, it's an earth contract location within planet Earth, third rock from the sun of Milky Way galaxy, GPS. So. Uh, I really didn't get into the uh, quantum stock market securities collections for uh, global postal use, uh, service mechanics. Uh, you may see that on the board up there. And uh, what that deals with is it deals with a concept of taking the titles and taking the values that we have created within the citizens that come forward, either for posits in the bank, and I say the word posits, not deposits, because the prefix de means to separate from. So if you go to a bank and you do a deposit, you're separating yourself from your posit or your position. The bank then turns around and hands you a receipt. RE means no, seat is contract, so they give you no contract back. Therefore, you've just separated yourself from your equity or your position. So in our banking system, either in our global hyphen monetary hyphen fund or our world hyphen central hyphen banking system, depending on what, if we're dealing with a corporation, if we're doing, dealing with private citizens, uh, we do posits. 
The global, uh, the stock markets that we have, as I've gave publications to every stock market in the world uh, back in 2007. Yes, two, no, 2008, I apologize, 2008, January of 2008. And the stock markets around the world kept my quantum stock market that I presented them. The quantum stock market had specific mechanics in it for the placement of values on commodities, on the cargos, on titles. It had correct communication, parse syntax, grammar to give um, uh, a building block for foundations for stock markets. Like I said, I sent it to all stock markets, but instead of accepting some of the, my registered correspondence, uh, the stock markets became wise to what I was doing, instead of refusing it, flipped the documents over, placing a registration stamp on the back of the mailing, and mailed it back to me, which was a, in the fiction world, they call that a, a sealed letter of credit, sealed being a past tense pronoun, of is an adverb, letter is a uh, verb, of is an adverb making credit a verb. So it's a, it's a condition of state that doesn't exist. We have, we have contracts of the value. So as they came back under a consignment consignee for Nalem, Nalem is the passenger that boards the vessel, such as the green cards that you see in front of the claimant there. The, the, na the name on the vessel, vessel may, be, may have been the Vassalese. It may have been the, uh, the claimant itself, mailing it a sort of, you know, registration to himself. When they came back to my post office, where I was staying at the time, uh, the, the post office says, we got a document here, but we don't know what it is. And they came from five different various stock markets, uh, International Court of Arbitration, uh, it, through the International Chamber of Commerce out of Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, Australia, Brazil, Colombia, uh, and a couple other stock markets. I just don't have the paperwork with me, and I apologize, because I didn't know I was going to be giving this presentation when I got here. Uh, so, but instead of refusing the documents, they put the registration like I was saying. And so what I did is I placed my autograph across the, the, uh, the registered um, identification from those specific postal systems from, from the countries that mailed them back to me. And I met with the post office, uh, the postmaster of that specific post office, the post, uh, a postal employee, the senior postal employee for the shift as well as two postal inspectors. And when I placed my autograph across the stamp, saying that this is a, a contract of the value, a, a sealed contract of the value, not credit, because this was an actual condition of state of building block. Credit is something that is in the future, so we had a contract. When I placed my autograph across the mail registration, both front and back, the United States Post Office then put their bullet stamp and round eight seal on my on over my registration from frontwards and backwards. I also then put my autograph across the bullet stamp from uh, the specific country postal systems, which may be postmaster, bank banker of that vessel contract. I then sat down with the founders of the International Monetary Fund families and I explained to them what I had done. They told me in all functions of postal movements for the bills of the ladings that I was correct. So I'm not guessing at this. This is not a guess. This is actual correctness to create a foundation to take the titles, to take the lawsuits, and put them into our own postal functioning for collections. Now, when you look at the collections, and David did, great, did a great explanation earlier about how the Universal Postal Union was trumped because they had full closure under Title 42, 1986, and they were given rescission, and they did not stop and correct, which means they were still modifying their, they couldn't humble themselves to come to us. Number one probably was 95% because of their uneducation and their second grade reading and writing level. So because they, they would not humble themselves and come to us for correction, the U.S. Postal Service autographed the stamps for the bills of the ladings and then was able to command a duty, which was to collect of the fiction people that had taken their monies offshore. But when we use the, uh, the postal mechanics of this, as a claimant comes in or a banker would come in, right? Because a banker is going to like, okay, so you got title. How do we collateralize this? How do, we, how do we collect on this? I don't comprehend the mechanics of it. 
David has placed his autograph across those stamps on those contracts. He has seen those contracts. I have placed them. If a banking system chooses to come in and join with the quiet title for monetization to place liens against it to create monies for their contracts, either through a, uh, a marshalling hyphen lien or a marshalling hyphen security, it just depends on the bailment that they choose to use, the, 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 the bank would then come under an amnesty clause that David and I would draft up to allow them to join in the commercialization of that, of that vessel because they would be joining our function because we can place our own value on what the values are on the title because we have a correct survey. We can place the value on, on our um, uh, arbitration of it because on a sec separate issue from that, um, I also alerted um, the International Bank of Settlements, being an adjective prone, uh, the being an adverb, international being an adjective, bank being a pronoun, of is an adverb modifying banks backwards and the verb in front of it, settlements, as well as the International Court of Arbitration. So we could take it in either out of uh, in the personum or in the realm, just depending on the banker's knowledge and how they want to interact with that. So that's kind of where we're at with that for right now. And, you know. We also have made treaties with the World Court at The Hague and the United States Supreme Court and written amnesty agreements as well as claims of the life, live life for the judges while studying and learning how to use the correct parse syntax grammar. And the different, different agencies of the military and the postal and other branches of government uh, that request, uh, that make quests of us, we uh, also issue amnesty agreements where they're studying to be correct. We're not here to hurt anyone or to embarrass anyone. We're here to fix the problem that has been going on for 8,500 years. And that's all we're about. We're about grammar, about mathematics, interface on grammar, and how to correct our contracts. China has already adapted the uh, quantum program uh, off my website at dwmlc.com for the colleges, universities, and high schools. South Korea has been using this since 2007 at their schools full time. So the different different countries, the uh, uh, law, uh, university law in Denver, Colorado, uh, it's a law school and they teach this only to their senior class members. We've had conflicts with universities and colleges all over the world by calling us up saying that your technology of mathematical interface on grammar disqualifies every book in our library, every book in our school. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and, and Marquette University posted me off their premises because I was using their law library to write lawsuits, but quantumizing the, law suit, the lawsuits. And when they found out what I was doing, I just wound up disqualifying every book at the university. And Marquette's one of the leading medical universities and law universities in the United States. But when they found out what I could do to the grammar, they then posted me off the premises that if they ever catch, and I have my picture hanging all around the campus, that if you see this person, report them for trespassing. They were that afraid of people knowing how to be correct because it would disqualify their continuing lies that they tell people through grammar. Other schools, Russell's ran into his teachers when he went to school and they're the same way, they run away from him because they're too embarrassed. I've done lectures at high schools and colleges all around the United States and when the teachers, the English teachers, hear what we have to say about the correct parse syntax grammar, and history's teachers see what is really going on through the correct parse syntax grammar, have been resigning their teaching positions because they can't go to school and face their students to lie to them and give them misinformation because they know how sensitive this information is. So we're asking you, the people, if you want quantum grammar, if you want to be correct, if you want to learn this technology, Russell and I are whistleblowers. And so get a whistle and blow it. <laughs> 
because what it's doing is it's sharing, it's, it's, it's telling people that the whistleblowers of the world are suing to be correct, that they're tired of being lied to, being tired of being harvested, and people can hear a whistle from a long way off. And so using, this, the, using a real whistle to advertise you're a whistleblower to be for the correct parse syntax grammar. And Russell and I are both also registered and running as a director, directorship under the director's party for the 2016 presidential election. The word president, P-R-E means no, S-I is simulation, and E-N-T is denture, which is contract. For I concur. So we're not going to be part of a pre-simulation illusion. What we're going to do is be a director of original construction with original construction grammar to fix our country's language, contracts, constitutions, and the rest of the world will follow because it's a math procedure. And we don't want to go to war with anyone ever again over a math problem. So I thank you for your cooperation and watching this video. Russell, you got anything to add? Uh, if uh, I'm a very difficult person to get a hold of. Uh, so if you choose to get a hold of me, you can email me at 4, F-O-R, T-H-E, treasury at gmail.com. 4, the treasury at gmail.com. I will do my best to get back in correspondence with you. Please do not email me emails about fiction bankers doing this, fiction bankers doing that. None of that stuff means anything. It's be correct or be not. The first of many videos that we'll be following as the federal postal court moves down the, through history and we are 100% legitimate and we are, a, we are here to stop and correct wrongs that are being uh, besieged on the American people. If you're tired of being uh, ticketed with fictitious bills of lading, arrested for, by opinions of what people are uh, making, and you want to have something concrete, then you want to get your laws, rules, regulations, and codes redone. And we've been working, I've been working on this now for uh, over 34 years to fix this problem. I started in 1980, and Russell's, Russell came on board with me in 1995. And we've been working together side by side on this ever since. And we have hundreds of other people that are team members doing research uh, to not only study what we've done, but that takes them off into other rabbit holes that they, they discover uh, new points of information as there are millions of different forms of information. And every time something relevant pops up, they will send us an email or correspond with us. We'll syntax it and give them a yay or nay on relativity. So if you have something that you feel is important uh, and you want to first look at our videos under David Wynn Miller videos under search, it's on over 22 different carriers on the internet or go to my website dwmlc.com which explains the mechanics of courts sentence structures and everything that we have here, including the, the contracts that we've already written and posted up there for the world to view. Outside of that, I, I think we're, we're done here today, and uh, good luck to the world. Thank you. Yes, thank you.